Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on SQL commands. Do you know friend that in today's world where massive volumes of data are generated, there is an increasing need to manage data in the databases. Relational databases are among the mostly used and SQL is a foundation of relational databases. As a result, SQL skills are required for majority of work tasks. It is frequently the default tool for working on a traditional database such as changing tabular data and retrieving data. Before we discuss today's agenda, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's discuss today's agenda. First we are going to start with what is SQL. Then we are going to learn about what is DDL. Moving ahead we are going to have a discussion on what is DML. Then we are going to learn about what is DCL. And at the end we are going to discuss about what is TCL. So what is SQL? SQL is an acronym that stands for Structured Query Language. SQL is a database communication language. It is a standard language for relational database management system. According to American National Standard Institute, SQL statements are used to conduct operations such as updating or retrieving data from a database. SQL is commonly used in relational database management systems such as Oracle, Sysbase, Microsoft SQL Server, Access, Ingress and many others. Relational Software Corporation also known as Oracle Corporation recognized the potential of the concepts described by Cod, Chamberlain and Boyce in the late 1970s and developed their own SQL based relational database management system with the goal of selling it to the United States Navy, Central Intelligence Agency and other US government agencies. Relational Software released one of the earliest commercially available SQL implementation which is Oracle version 2 for wax machines in June 1979. It is especially beneficial when dealing with structured data which includes relationship between entities and variables. SQL has major advantages over previous read-write APIs like ISM and VSAM. It first introduced the concept of accessing multiple records with a single command. Second, it removes the need to declare how to access a record such as with or without an index. SQL is basically a data query language, a data definition language, a data control language and data manipulation language. So if we talk about DQL, DDL and DCL, they all combined to form SQL. It was originally based on relational algebra and tuple relational calculus and it comprises of many different sorts of statement. SQL scope includes data querying, data manipulation which includes insert, update and delete and SQL is mostly a declarative language but it also has a procedural components. Although most database systems employ SQL, they also have their own proprietary extensions however that are exclusively used on their system. Common SQL statements like select, insert, update, delete, create and drop can be used to do practically everything with a database. So what is the purpose of SQL basically? Here are several compelling reasons to use SQL. It enables users to gain access to data in the relational database management system. It aids in the description of the data. It enables you to define data in a database and manipulate that data. SQL allows you to create and delete databases and tables. SQL allows you to use a function in a database as well as create a view and a stored procedure. Table, methods and views all can have permissions configured. Now let's discuss about what is DDL. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. The current database industry incorporates DDL into any formal language representing data. However, it is considered as a subset of SQL. SQL is frequently combined with imperative verbs as regular English sentences to execute database changes. As a result, DDL does not seem a distinct language in SQL database but rather defines changes to the database schema. It is used to create and modify the structure of objects in a database by working with database schema specifications. Unlike Data manipulation commands which are used to modify data. DDL commands are used to change the database structure such as creating new tables or objects and all of their characteristics which includes data type, table name and etc. Let's see what are the commonly used DDL. The commonly used DDL are create, alter, drop and truncate. 
Let's look at few of the DDL commands. Create. Create is used to create a new table such as create table employee, employee ID which is as integer and which is also a primary key and we have the first name with data type as character. Now let's look at alter. An alter commands make changes to an existing database table. This command can create new columns, remove existing columns and even modify data type of column in a database table such as alter table employee add primary key employee pk. To introduce a constraint and enforce a unique value, we add a unique primary key to the table in this example. Employee pk is a primary key constraint on the employee table. Now let's look at what is DML. DML stands for data manipulation language. It is a set of computer commands that allows user to manipulate data in a database. Inserting data into database tables, accessing existing data, deleting data from existing tables and changing existing data are all part of this manipulation. DML is typically used in SQL databases. As shown below, DML's functional capability is arranged in manipulation commands such as select, update, insert into and delete from. Let's look at commonly used DML commands. The commonly used DML commands are select, update and insert. If we talk about select, this command retrieves rows from a table such as select column name from table name where the condition is a syntax. The most commonly used DML command in SQL is select. Now let's look at update. This command alters one or more records data. Update is a syntax for an update command where table title, set condition and set column name equals to value. So this is a syntax for update. Now let's look at insert. Inserts one or more records into a database table such as insert into table name is a insert command syntax. Now let's look at what is DCL. To access the stored data, the data control language is employed. It is mostly used to revoke and grant user access to a database. This language does not support rollback in a database. It is a component of structured query language. It aids in a control of access to data contained in a database. It works in tandem with data manipulation language and data definition language. It is the most basic of the three instruction. It allows administrators to remove and assign database permission to specific users as needed. These commands are used to grant, delete and reject database retrieval and manipulation to the users. Now let's look at commonly used DCL commands. The most commonly used DCL commands are grant and revoke. If we talk about grant, it is used to award a user a privilege. The grant command authorizes specific users to carry out specific activities. Syntax can be grant privilege name on the object name to the user. Here select, update, delete, insert, alter are all privilege names. Table name is an object name and the name of the user to whom we provide privileges is a user. Now let's look at revoke. Revoke is used to deprive a user of permission. The revoke command allows the owner to revoke previously granted permission. Its syntax can be revoke the user privilege name on object name. Here select, update, delete, insert, alter are all privilege name. Table name is an object name and the name of the user who writes are being removed is user. Now let's look at what is TCL. TCL is an abbreviation for transaction control languages. These commands are used to ensure database consistency and to manage transactions generated by DML commands. A transaction is a collection of SQL statements that are executed on data stored in a database management system. Where a transaction is made, it is briefly recorded in a database. So we utilize TCL commands to make the modifications permanent. The commonly used TCL commands are commit, rollback and save point. So if we talk about rollback, this command is used to retrieve or restore data to the most recent save point or committed state. If the data is inserted, removed or altered is incorrect for any reason, then you can roll back the data to a specific save point or if no save point is available to the latest committed state. If we talk about commit, this command is used to permanently store the data. Any DDL commands such as insert, delete or update can be rolled back to the data 
if it's not permanently stored. To be on the safe side, commit command is employed. Now, let's look at save point. This command is used to temporarily save the data at a specific point so that it can be rolled back to that point. This was all for today's session. I hope so you would have got some idea regarding DDL, DCL, TCL and DML commands. Just a quick info guys. Intellipad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.